fin dal 1895 i rebbi la forte intuizione che le trasmissioni radiotelegrafiche sarebbero state possibili attraverso le più grandi distanze. At the beginning of the 20th century, a young man in his early 20s made one of the greatest discoveries in the history of communications. It was nothing short of a revolution. The single greatest leap forward since the day Gutenberg invented the printing press. Guglielmo Marconi had pulled the world out of the era of silence. He was spurred on by the encouragement of his English mother, by the support of his father, the first to invest in his talent and genius, by the loving commitment of his brother, who helped him in the field, and by the esteem of his English cousins, to whom he confided his observations upon the nature magnetic waves. This was the context in which he exercised his tremendous willpower. He would try and try and try yet again. Vi parlerò di una mia recente pubblicazione che riguarda le oscillazioni elettriche e illustrerò il mio discorso con una serie di dimostrazioni sperimentali. These were the years immediately prior to the great discoveries that gave birth to the wireless telegraph. An adventure into science that began in 1895 with the experimental breakthrough which is now known as the Hill of the Celestini. Marconi proved that radio waves would not be stopped by the apparent obstacle presented by a mountain. Some few years later, he knew he could overcome the immensity of the ocean. On the rocky Cornwall coast, he imagined challenging the stormy winter weather to project a signal to the faraway coasts of Newfoundland, more than 3,000 kilometers over the horizon. For the first time in the world, a signal was transmitted beyond the bounds of a telegraph wire. It had simply traveled through the atmosphere on electromagnetic waves and had overcome the curvature of the Earth. And here, finally, the signals arrived. The volume was low, but it was still possible to perceive clearly the signals through the instruments he himself had created. The world had come out of the era of silence to enter into the era of communication the Istituto Luce and Europromex present The Wave Wizard in co-production with the Council of Sasso Marconi, a docudrama on the youth of Guglielmo Marconi, the time of his greatest discoveries and inventions. Unique and exclusive library footage and the scientifically supported fiction of director Alessandro Giuppone present the most compelling portrait to date of the young cosmopolitan genius who bridged the world. The man who laid the foundations of radio. Hello, you boy in the corner there. You ought to be a boy scout. You're a fine looking fella and I know you would make a jolly good backwoodsman by the look of you. You're ugly enough anyway. And you girl there, no, I don't mean you, I mean the pretty one behind you. You ought to be a girl guide, you know. Oh, you are one? Oh, I beg your pardon. That's quite right. Now go on and tell all your pals to come and be girl guides like you. I'm very glad to see you there. Thank you all, good luck to you, and I wish we may meet again. Thank you. And now I would ask you to listen to your promise and think it over as you've never thought before. You promise on my honor, your honor, mind you, to do my best, to do my duty to God and to the King and to obey the Scout's law.
Will you do your best? Answer me. History of Scout and Radio will long back to the time of Marconi and Lord Baden Powell, and yes, the time of the Titanic. 1911, the first time of Scout working with shortwave radio by a Rudel troop in England. 1912, Titanic sunk in April. 1913, the Marconi Company offered free instruction in wireless telegraphy to members of youth movement. Lord Baden Powell hoped that Boy Scouts would use this opportunity. He said, Wireless has become a favorite hobby with boys of the right kind, and it is a valuable hobby for them because it has a big future before it. 1957, there were few Scout leaders who brought their shortwave radios to England, World Scout Chambury. The Scout show a big interest, and one of the Scout leaders, Lizzie Michel, suggests that in the following year, Scout could meet again on the radio wave, and that was the start of the Jamboree on the air, or Jota. 1958 May, just a few months before I was born, the first official Jota took place. After the activity, Ham Scout leader Leslie Mitchell handed over to the World Scout Bureau, who organized it since 1959. The aims of Radio Scout are the following. The Scout get the possibility to make contact with Scout in their own and other countries, and they get the possibility to develop the contacts they made during the Jota or Joti. The Scout get knowledge of shortwave radio, the Scout get knowledge of the electronic components and equipment. Ever since 1957, the World Scout Jamboree has hosted workshops on the radio scouting as free time activities. Thailand hosted the 20th World Scout Jamboree in 2003, and it was the only time that amateur radio became one of the main activities. Amateur radio had this honor because the director of this activity, Dr. Sasitara Pichai Chanarong, was also a ham in ham family. We happened to be in contact when a ham told me that he found some cracks under the football stadium. So I tried to pass this information to the Department of Physical Education. A lady got the phone and asked for my name. I told her. To my surprise, she said, Are you Tida from 100 Watts magazine? I am Deputy Director General, and I am the niece of the late Dr. Narong Pichai Chanarong. Do you remember? I have learned your name from him. He never forgot how you had helped him when his car got problem. Oh goodness, I was so glad. The secret that makes scouting always attractive to youngsters are learning by doing, no blah blah blah, and the task are almost impossible, but possible if you try harder. Our HAMS activities were interested by scout leaders and school teachers. In 2005, we were invited to run the activities again in the 25th of Asia Pacific Scout Jamboree. World well, Scout Jamboree has to take care of almost 40,000 scouts, leaders, and organizers. We have six years of preparation two years spent on searching for suitable campsite and four years for activities. We had to run and adjust the activities for local scouts again and again a few times a year. Ham Radio was a part of City of Size. Our activities in the World Scout Chamry consist of the 21st century fox hunting, using VHF equipment to locate the mobile fox in order to win the fox hunting badge. The fox played the tune, it is a small world after all, so we saw several scouts dancing while they were trying to find the hidden transmitters. Little Houston was for learning of how to go and live in space, tracking amateur satellites and other planets, also slow scan TV, APRIS and packet radio were amongst the new digital mode to play with. For example, sending your own picture over shortwave radio or type a message into the packet system. In the 25th Asia-Pacific Scout Chamboree, we had two more activities. One was the Space Detective, 
learning to read pictures from satellite and how to use GPS. Another was a super radio net controller and a martial radio emergency service. First airs and radio coordinating were trained before sending the scout to find the injured to help them back to the camp. Echo to Zero Alpha Juliet, station of the 20th World Scout Jamboree, was the first ever of the International Space Station contact from the World Scout Jamboree site, and the first time ever that the contact was from the fuel station. Also, Echo 25 Alpha Juliet Station was the first time ever of the International Space Station contact from the Asia Pacific Skull Jamboree campsite, and the very first time ever that the contact managers were the young Scout Ham themselves. There were 14 international Scout Hams and 17 local Hams that had the name in the World Scout Jamboree site and the 75 in the Asia Pacific Scout Jamboree site. But more than 100 were working in the background and with the great support from the radio scouting department of the World Scout Organization. This is a very challenging activity, very tough and very tired. After it was over, there would be nothing you can't do," said the Secretary of the World Organization of Scout Movement. And the first part of it was very true. The ants go marching five by five, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching five by five, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching five by five, the little ones stopped to look at a hive and they all went marching down.